Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. And by Sweetwater Digital Asset Consulting, connecting new money with old money since 2018. Cake Wallet and Sweetwater Digital are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Alexander Svetsky, CEO of Amber, podcaster, and a self-declared Supreme Bitcoin Extreme Maxi. In this episode, Alexander discusses why he is a next-level Maxi and his rationale for why it is okay that Bitcoin is and always will be transparent at the core protocol level. Alex believes Bitcoin's true purpose is to be a censorship-resistant settlement network, not a transactional network. Despite being an anarcho-capitalist, Alex says he aligns more with Bitcoin as opposed to Monero. Monero Talk starts now. What's going on? Thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate Thank it. you for, Thank you. for giving Thank me you your time. So as I was telling you before we hit the record button, uh, I've just recently started really kind of discovering you. Um, I don't know how I first came across you, but you know, then I... For whatever it is, I found you and I, I thought it was, uh, you had some interesting things to say and I started listening to your podcast. Um, I listened to your Alex Gladstein one, I think was the first one. That was a really cool discussion. Um, really impressed by the guests that you get on there and like the, the range of topics you talk about. Um, mm -hmm. so, so I guess first things first, uh, you know, you should be proud. You're doing a good job. You're getting some good information out there. And uh, Thanks, I, appreci I appreciate your style. I like, uh, you know, I like the way you talk to people and you just kind of rap with whoever you're talking with and free flow. So you're doing things right. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, the, the, the Gladstone one was a good chat. Uh, it was just that that day I had had, um, uh, what was it, some some dental surgery. So I was like still mangled in the head from the um, from the anesthetic. So I I feel like that was one of my poorer performances where my head just wasn't working properly. Um, but anyway, it was, it was a good chat anyway. Well, yeah, it was, it was an interesting conversation though. And, um, I guess, you know, obviously, so this Monero talk, I don't know if you watched any of any of my stuff, but I mean, a lot of it ends up, especially when I bring on BTC maxis and I don't know, am I, is it fair to call you a Bitcoin maximalist? Or are you a Bitcoin maximalist? I'd be sort of in the realm of like, Bitcoin complete fucking supremacist. So like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so yeah, so you, usually next level maxi. <laughs> next level maxi. So I've had a few of those on and usually the discussion ends up leading towards, you know, the kind of the, the debate over fungibility, which I'm sure we'll get to. Um, <laughs> but before we even get there, I just kind of wanted to hear your reasoning because I, like I said, I think you're, you're a good speaker. You're very eloquent as to why, why you are a Supreme Bitcoin extreme maxi. Like how did you arrive at that? What's your, what's your reasoning there, your philosophical reasoning and how'd you get to that point? Oh man, that, that's a, I guess that's a relatively, um, the, 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 we could do an answer. We could do a podcast, you know, an entire podcast just on that answer, but let's, Let's maybe start with, you know, I, I think a lot of people come into the quote unquote crypto space to, you know, to, to make money basically, right? You know, they see it as this, you know, place where you can trade and you make a quick buck and kind of like this, you know, it's the, the, most people's initial uh, interaction with it is almost like a get rich quick scheme, you know, it's like pump and dumps and this and that. So, so I originally came to it because I had a friend of mine who was buying shit off the dark net and he, you know, he mentioned Bitcoin again to me. And I had heard about it back in the day because when I was younger, I was in the gold and silver sort of space, you know, this idea of sound money and, you know, 
money that cannot be printed, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I sort of understood it. And, and I'd first heard about Bitcoin back then. And I can't remember if it was Max Kaiser jumping down on a couch or, or something was going on. And I dismissed it at the time. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll stick with my physical gold and silver you know, to, to my everlasting regret. And it was only in sort of 2016 again, where uh, where I had this friend, and he sort of mentioned that I'm like, "Fuck, is this thing still around?" You know, so I looked at it, I was like, "Fuck, it's 600 bucks a coin now, or whatever it was." Um, whereas when I had first heard about it, it was you know people were sort of getting excited that it was heading towards ten dollars. And anyway, that that was you know my my natural tendency as an entrepreneur, someone who likes to, you know, produce wealth, create wealth, and, you know, having had experience in the marketplace, you know, in, in sort of the stock market and options and derivatives markets and all that sort of stuff in the past, I went and started digging. And the more I dug, you know, I sort of dabbled in shit coins and, you know, I went through the whole, you know, Ethereum phase and all of this sort of stuff. But as I dug into it, like I realized that all of the shit here has no meaning. It's just a bunch of people like, you know, B Bitcoin sort of emerged as this demonopolization of money, you know, as let's rip the capacity to print money, which money is supposed to represent the product of our labor. And some assholes get to fucking print it while the rest of us have to trade our finite time and uh, energy for it. Um, you know, it's supposed to rip that out of their hands and turn money into a thing of rules, not of rulers. And for me, like, I guess I didn't understand it to this extent in the beginning, but I understood that there was a, there was an essence or there was a mission behind Bitcoin when all the other stuff, there wasn't any fucking mission. It was just, it was just people printing their own money effectively, just, just replicating the fiat experiment, but just on their own private, you know, digital networks, which they, you know, started labeling as fucking blockchains or whatever. And, and that stuff became really disillusioning for me. So, so, you know, over the time, you know, I kind of, I had this um, meme back in the day, which is, you know, you start at Bitcoin and then you sort of go down the shitcoin path and then you end up with like Bitcoin and Monero and then you sort of find true enlightenment and you end up sort of with just Monero, right? So, so I, I went through this phase of like, look, you know, the only two things that matter here is a sound money and, you know, a, a, a money that is private in nature so that people can, you know, I, I believe in pure freedom of, you know, transact, like the freedom to transact uh, is tied to the the freedom of human action, which is the most fundamental form of speech, right? So, so you know, I, I in the early days I thought that you know Monero can sort of provide something like that, but as I you know as I continued down the path, what I realized was the only way we win this battle, um, because this this is you know make no mistake about it, this is a war, this is a battle between uh, a fiat world and a world in which the, um, the nature of money, but also the nature of free human action um, is rooted in something sound, incorruptible, and a, a playing field that we're all, you know, on the same set of rules. And, and that for me is the larger theme here. It's like, you know, on one side, a completely fucking bullshit world, which is what we live in today. Like everything is fake. Like we have fake food, we have fake money, we have fake politicians, we have fake promises, we have fake viruses, we have fake pen. We have, we have fucking fake everything, and you know we're sort of just trudging through this random, you know, meaningless lie on one side. Whereas you know Bitcoin offers the potential for us disintermediating all of that. Um, because, you know, I, I think Bitcoin has really recognized that the root of all of that is the capacity for the state to perpetuate a lie by issuing their own money. And if we can break that monopoly, the flow on effects from that become really important. So as, as um, the, the longer I've been in this and the more I've seen the world uh, get stupider and stupider um, and resemble, you know, Weimar Republic, basically, um, principles, the more I've just hardened as a Bitcoiner, you know, with the philosophy of we fix this, the flow and effects that we get from here change, the, change everything. Like you change the base incentives, you change fucking everything. Um, and, and like, I'll just throw one last analogy here is like, at the moment, you know, we're on a train and that train is like heading right off a fucking cliff. Um, and changing the driver on the train 
you know, may slow it down a little bit, but we're still going to go off the cliff. What we need to do is we need to jump on a completely new set of train tracks that are not going off the cliff, but are going in the other, other direction. And that's what I fundamentally believe Bitcoin does. We, we, we change the entire game. It's a complete paradigm shift. And we, we do away with the garbage of the old. And I, I just think it's our best shot by far. Yeah, so I, I agree with everything you say and all, all your reasoning behind why you're, you know, so passionate about it. And then you said bit, you kind of get to that crossroads where it's like you could go Bitcoin or you could go Monero. Uh, you sound like more of a Monero guy when I hear you like the, what you're like most passionate about the like the uh, essentially, you know, you, you equate, you know, money with speech right or it might even be you know something that needs to be more censorship resistant than than actual words themselves right the the importance of people being able to freely transact without censorship isn't is it monero the more extreme version of that so what why 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 did you go right instead yeah. of uh going left yeah i i, I don't believe monero is um a better version of that so so I, I think that the, the strategy, so, so the, the, this is where I guess Monero people and Bitcoin people sort of um, are aligned is that they, they sort of agree in a similar sort of vision, long-term vision, but the strategy to get there is very different, right? Um, so, you know, I, I will just also mention one thing that you'll just, just to sort of clarify is I think human action is uh, the most important form of speech. So, so, so when I like, I always say talk is cheap, show me your bank account and I'll tell you what you believe, you know, and, and, and I think that is fundamentally true. Right. And, and if a state can have complete control of the money, they have complete and utter control of everything you can fucking do. Simple as that. There, there is no two ways around that. Um, so for me, um, you know, I think people, they muddy the water when they look at censorship resistance and privacy. They think they're sort of somehow, uh, you know, the same thing, but they're not. I, I, I separate the two because censorship resistance is um, is tied to cost. It's tied to economic uh, economic cost. So the reason Bitcoin is censorship resistant is not because it's private. It's got you know it's it's pseudonymous and it doesn't recognize identity. Um, you know, in the in the same way as the legacy financial system does, right? You know, all, all it recognizes is the owner of the private key or the controller of the private key has, by definition, you know, it's it's ten tenths of the law. Possession of that private key is ten tenths of the law on Bitcoin. Means you can control it. So, so there's no real ownership, you know, on Bitcoin or Monero for this, right? You know, if you lose your private key, you're fucked. You know, that, so so whoever owns a private key is the owner of that. Now. The the censorship resistant element, though, um, and this is where you know Bitcoin is uh, extremely important, is that it has the economic mass behind it to ensure that any transaction requires billions or trillions of dollars of economic input to attempt to reverse anything. First, secondly, it's able to achieve that because Bitcoin turns the greed of the enemies that we're trying to fight against them. So what it does is it's a black hole and it sucks their economic mass in to Bitcoin and by default bankrupts them because they become obsolete the stronger Bitcoin gets. And it can do that because Bitcoin made some specific uh, trade-offs in the beginning or the Bitcoin community made specific trade-offs in the beginning, which is uh, verifiability over privacy on the base layer. And, and, and I think this is where a lot of people go wrong with Bitcoin is it's not a transactional uh, network. That is not what it's supposed to be. It is supposed to be a censorship resistant settlement network. And what you can do on that is you can actually abstract the censorship resistance to higher orders or to higher layers. And I believe that is the ultimate way we do this. And, and I mean, it's, it's, it's evident all throughout nature. You know, you have arteries and capillaries in the body. You know, you have primary rivers and then you have the deltas that um, stream out of them. It's like everything in the world functions in terms of layers. And the trade-offs for Bitcoin is that the verifiability of the, um, the amount of Bitcoin, the total supply and the capacity for anybody anywhere to operate a node and to be their own bank to verify 
everything from transactions to total amount to you know the rules on the chain and everything that comes first and foremost that's what gives bitcoin its censorship resistant it's the fact that it is transparent enough for us to verify the rules and verify the supply and verify the transactions at any point in time for practically next to nothing you know bitcoin is the cheapest node you'll ever run for any kind of network um, and then we can start to abstract that censorship resistant nature of bitcoin through the digital primitives that Bitcoin gives us, you know, with hash time lock contracts, with multi-sig, with all of that sort of stuff. And, you know, you see that in Lightning, like Lightning is completely fucking private transactions. Nobody knows what's going on in Lightning. You can't trace that shit. And it's instant, it's fast, but it gives you the censorship resistant uh, element that the Bitcoin base layer provides as its selling point. You know, B Bitcoin genuinely sells us two things, a fixed supply money that nobody can fuck with, and and a, a immutable censorship resistant network which moves forward in time and the more it moves forward in time the more economic mass that snowballs behind it such that no fucking power in the world can reverse it okay and, and, and that's why you know bitcoin sort of yeah. wins um yeah i mean the the th Monero does all those things too, right? So, um, you know, the censor I, I disagree in that censorship resistance and privacy um, are different. I mean, I think they're, they're related, right? So They're related. Uh, they're not the same, though. They're related. Right. They're, they're, right. But privacy adds to censorship resistance, right? So let, let's say, let's say, you know, all the governments in the world got together and said, you know, we're, we're banning, we're banning Bitcoin and we're banning Monero. You know, we're, we're coming after you. Uh, if you got any crypto, we want you to hand it over to us. You know, it's, it's now illegal. You know, you can't, you can't hold it. You can't do anything with it. At that point, I mean, what, what would you rather? What would you rather be holding? You know, Bitcoin or Monero? Well, my argument is that at that point you should be holding lead and chickens um, because you're going to need some eggs and you need some fucking bullets for anyone coming for your for your money. Because at that point, um, they're coming well, what, for everything. Why, why not protect your money with cryptography? That's the whole point. That's the whole. No, at, at, whole at that point, like if if the government was able to uh, collectively coordinate such a confiscation of wealth from the citizens we have long like monero and bitcoin have both long failed the, the, the well, beauty that, of i bitcoin, mean that's that's a weak argument so you, i mean i mean that's the whole point though right the point is to design a technology that is resistant to something like that in theory now, obviously yes there'd be much larger problems but just a theoretical exercise well, if you okay, want if you want to create okay. if you want to create a technology you know that's as censorship resistant as possible uh aren't you going to want to build privacy into it like you, you know you don't want to no, hold because holding gold on your do? bed is one thing but holding gold mm -hmm under your bed with a big flag on your front lawn that tells everybody you have gold under your bed is another thing, right? So wh why wouldn't we Absolutely. want I would argue that the Bitcoin, second version. Bitcoin solved that problem differently to Monero. Monero's, Monero tries to solve the problem by obfuscating. Um, Bitcoin solves the problem by getting the enemy's skin in the game. Well, what what's to say that Monero, Monero can't do that as well, right? I mean, we're 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 talking like Monero. It, it will it, like people it will never do that. It will ne Monero. it will never do that. So so Monero started on the back foot. First of all, it doesn't have the economic mass. Um, it doesn't have the the ease of uh, validating nodes. Um, it doesn't have the ease of verifiability that Bitcoin has. Um, it doesn't have the brand name that Bitcoin has. It doesn't have the momentum that Bitcoin has. And also, it already is known as a completely privacy type centric coin, right? So it's not like Bitcoin won in the sense that it won the store of value argument because it is fundamentally the best. Like, you can't have a better store of value in the universe than a fixed supply thing because that maps directly to time and energy, right? Time and energy are the two things we can't print. So if money is supposed to represent the product of our labor and the product of our labor is a derivative of time and energy, money should also be fixed. Like it should map directly across that. And Bitcoin delivers that with an economic guarantee because of how much infrastructure is built on and around it and how much economic mass is now held uh, on the network. And that keeps snowballing. So what Bitcoin's done is it's turned the greed of these fucking Muppets, whether they're in the state, Wall Street, government, wherever the fuck they are, they've all got it in there so so 
it is becoming increasingly difficult for them to do that. They will not do that with Monero. Um, you know, maybe in an alternate universe, if Monero was the first one to come out, that may have happened. But I, I just don't see that fucking happening. Like, that's the problem. Um, so you okay. know, maybe five, six years ago, there was an opportunity for, you know, uh, that kind of economic mass to sort of converge around Monero. But it, it, it didn't happen. So, so the world we live in today, like the, the, the version of events that are playing in the path dependent emergence of Bitcoin as the ultimate store of value and as the censorship resistant type money means that that is the that that's that's where the war is going to be won or lost yeah um, all the other stuff is the battle basically right well i mean i i got into crypto it sounds like before you and i started off as a bitcoiner and made my way into monero as i went down the rabbit hole and realizing you know if you're gonna you're going to want the technology that does the censorship resistant component and decentralized component the best, because ultimately that's what the true value proposition is. Um, everything else is just kind of, you know, hogwash. Uh, you know, the, the fact that Bitcoin is capped, um, I think it's a great sales point and I totally agree with you. You know, it makes it, it makes it a great meme, right? There'll only be, ever be 21 million. Um, but you know, it's Monero is effectively just as scarce as Bitcoin, right? It's, it's not so much that there only be ever a certain amount. It's that the supply curve is known to all and that it can't be manipulated by anybody. Um, I mean, that that's, you know, and, and what, what I don't understand is, you know, in, in Bitcoin, I feel like the main design criteria is security. That's what you always hear, right? It's about security, security of the network, securing the chain. But then you see things that are done that sacrifice security. For example, the, 20, the 21 million cap, right? So um, that's potentially sacrificing the future security of the network. Like we, you know, that, that's an unknown. Nobody can say, you know, that, uh, Bitcoin's network is going to be just as secure in the future than as it is today, because in the future, the security is going to be based purely on transactions, right? It's no longer going to be based on block reward because there won't be a block reward anymore. So how do you, you know, how do you look at things like that, those design decisions? I mean, basically what I'm getting at is that I see hypocrisy in some of the things that are done in Bitcoin and the arguments that are made. Um, and you know, that, that's one of them. And I, I'd like to hear, I guess, your retort to that. How do you justify Bitcoin sacrificing its security for the 21 million cap? I wouldn't say it's a sacrifice. I would say it's a, it's a measured, um, trade-off. So like we're, we're already seeing, um, almost 25 or 30% mm -hmm. of the revenue that miners earn today is from uh, freaking fees. Um, and, and that's only going to continue. So I think along the way, you've also seen like, I mean, we, we, the Bitcoin has fought an entire block size war to ensure that the blocks remain small so that, you know, not only verifiability and um, validation remains cheap and easy, uh, you know, for anybody to run a node, but it also ensures that there is a, there is a healthy fee market um, on the actual blockchain on the base layer itself. Um, and I mean, when you think that we're only 12 years into this and already 25% of the revenue for miners is coming from fees, and we're still only in the fourth epoch where we're generating 6.25 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. I mean, given another three or four epochs where we're down to like, you know, half a Bitcoin per um, per thing, like most of the fees are going to be coming from... Um, from transactional fees and, and at the rate Bitcoin's growing and, and at the rate the rest of the world is deteriorating, the amount of capital out there that is looking for a safe haven, it's fucking ridiculous, man. And, and this is where I think, you know, Bitcoin as a settlement network, particularly as Bitcoin starts to reach dollar cent parity, like even cent, uh, cent Satoshi parity. But, you know, when we get to um, dollar Satoshi parity, there is so much money to be made as a miner um, just through network fees alone. I, I don't see that as a problem at all. And, and, and you know, the, the, that asymptotic uh, nature of Bitcoin's issuance schedule 
is almost like it almost makes me believe that satoshi came from the fucking future and dropped it off and was like yep we needed to issue fast in the beginning and just sort of taper off over time because that gives bitcoin the capacity to spread initially really quickly but then tighten up and, and that's just so fucking powerful so i i just don't think it's a you know one could theoretically argue that oh you know there's a potential risk there but fr from a practical perspective i think that risk is so minimal it's not even funny like Bitcoin Cash has a fucking problem there because those idiots decided to go for a linear scaling uh, option by increasing their fucking block size. It's the most moronic thing I've ever seen um, versus, you know, the Bitcoin community stood their ground and kept the block size small, ensured that there's a healthy fee market there and started abstracting the secondary components like throughput, like um, privacy, like that sort of stuff to a, a subsequent layer because nobody's going to be using bitcoin like in the in the future there is nobody in their fucking right mind who is ever going to send a bitcoin transaction not unless you're sending billions of dollars worth that's not what bitcoin is bitcoin is a settlement network it, it's more like um maybe swift or fedwire it's like you know it's it's a it's a balancing between um, nodes, all of the stuff that we're going to do, all of the transactional stuff is all going to happen at second layers where privacy can be, can outperform the privacy that something like Monero can give you. Right. Like well, yeah, I mean, that, that I think you're right. You know, I think that's what they're going for, but that's the concern, right? Cause that's the, that's the big engineering flaw, not seeing the big picture, you know, um, it's kind of like a, a perpetual motion machine. It sounds great in theory. So all transactions are going to move to the second layer, but then, you know, who's going to, how is the, the, the primary layer going to be secured if all transactions move to the second layer? P I mean, Peter Todd, you know, he's an old school Bitcoin. I'm sure you've heard of Peter Todd. I mean, he's, he agrees that it's a it's a major issue. He's you know he's advocated for you know talks of you know piercing the cap. Um, but yeah, I mean if all transactions move to the second layer, then yeah, we're we're basically surely screwed in terms of Bitcoin security at that point. Not not, not at all, not at all. Because I mean there is still a need for um, base layer transactions. There will still be a need to set up uh, settle. Um, second layer transactions that that will always exist you know like what we're talking about here is potentially seven eight nine ten billion people in the world using this and products and services that offer um you know liquidity and channel management and all of this sort of stuff that once in a while are going to have to settle um but you are talking like about a ridiculous amount like to, to fill the bitcoin blockchain all you need is seven transactions per second i mean fuck me that's that's easy to do when you consider a global settlement network that, that I don't think that's a problem whatsoever. Like, and, and at that point, like each settlement might cost, you know, hundred thousand Satoshis, uh, which is probably going to be the equivalent of a hundred grand. Um, mm -hmm. so, so, you know, th th this, this will happen. And th there's, there's so much like what, what I think people underestimate is they're sort of viewing Bitcoin through today's sort of, uh, pricing model and through to today's lens. It's like, you know, Bitcoin right now, you can still probably use it to pay someone, you know, 50 bucks or 100 bucks, and you can probably stomach the fee. But it's it's just, I think it's ridiculous. Like, you know, in, in the future, like our kids are going to be looking at us. They're going to be like, really? You sent an on-chain transaction? What the fuck? Like, you know, it, it, I, I just think that's going to be so rare for individuals. Um, but, you know, products and services that are second layer tech or third layer or whatever, they are going to need to settle on a regular basis to net off their books for example to do their accounting to, to to run how to run their fucking business properly they're gonna need to do that and that they they will be able to command that cost um or, or, or the fee to do that because of how much you know they're enabling the routing on the second layer so i i, I just i think that's a non-starter not, notwithstanding that notwithstanding my position doesn't mean that we just get all complacent and be like oh yeah fuck, it's all gonna be fine you know, we need to think about this shit and we need to uh, act as if it's something that we need to fight for. But I, I just don't think that's where the great problem is, because I, I think I'm willing to take a bet on us solving that versus taking a bet on allowing the fiat standard to continue and us sort of ducking and dodging and taking the Monero path, which is let's sort of be underground um, and never actually topple the state. Um, you know, I, I just, 
I think Bitcoin wins the war, whereas with Monero, we might be able to win small battles here and there. But the, the window of the capacity to, to, you know, to operate with pure black market money, that, that continues to close, continues to close, continues to close, and it's getting harder and harder and harder. Um, so do you so do you think Bit, um, do you think Monero essentially is going to be be stopped by the government? I think it'll be uh, quenched. So I don't think they can physically stop Monero, but I think they can, um, you know, for example, ban all the exchanges from doing Monero. I mean, they've already started that, right? For, from selling Monero. So so they, what they do is they constrict its um, basically its oxygen for, for for any of these networks, whether it's Bitcoin, Monero, anything to exist. Their oxygen is new capital coming in, right? So 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 they they've been able to stifle a lot of the oxygen for Monero by limiting where you can buy it, you know, and all of that sort of stuff. And, and that, that, that is detrimental. Whereas they can't do that with fucking Bitcoin. Like it's, it's all like, maybe they could have done it a few years ago or five years ago, but they missed out on that fucking chance. Bitcoin's yeah. economic mass is too strong now. So, so, and, and this is where I think a lot of people just underestimate how powerful Bitcoin is, is that because it's seeped through all of their fucking cracks, it's like a virus that's stuck in their system now that they can't shake themselves from. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think, you know, obviously, uh, you know, much respect to Bitcoin. We wouldn't be here having this conversation, but for Bitcoin. Um, yeah. That being said, you know, I, I think and, and you know, and I say this to you in particular for all because for all the things I've, I've been hearing you say, and I've been, like I said, I've been listening to your podcast. I mean, you, you seem like a real idealist. You know, you're a libertarian. Maybe are you an you know maybe even consider yourself an anarchist? I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, sure. and, and probably ANCAP is like the ANCAP. Yeah. Version. So yeah. Uh, you know, we we need to make sure that something like Bitcoin, like Monero, survives as well, right? So you know, yeah, Bitcoin seems to be working. It's it's being uh, embraced by you know by everyone, including governments uh, and you know, entities that you wouldn't expect would would be on board for a technology that could essentially, uh, you know, disrupt them. Um, and, and that's working. But personally, I think, you know, Monero's get, Monero can't be killed, right? I think I think it's um, I think it's designed beautifully, uh, you know, like Bitcoin itself. Uh, I think in many ways, it's even more resistant to um, attack and being killed by, you know, uh, the powers that be, uh, the privacy that's built into it on the protocol layer, the um, ASIC resistance that it's that it's proven to to do pretty well, allowing it to be truly distributed. But additionally, you know, what it needs now more than ever, anything is just people to continue to support it. Right. I mean, that's that's really what will allow it to thrive. So there's nothing stopping Monero. The only thing stopping it is people, uh, you know, deciding not to use the network. Uh, and the network is being used because it has a real use case. Right. So we see it's it's used on, on the dark net. You know, you have to be an idiot to use Bitcoin to go on, on the dark net and buy something with it. Apparently, there are still a few of those idiots out there. But for the most part, people realizing the use case of Monero have moved to Monero. Um, but my point to you is, you know, you, you seem like somebody who truly believes in these concepts uh, that, you know, you want this technology, Bitcoin, to essentially disrupt the, you know, the status quo with its decentralized nature, uh, taking money, the power to control money away from the state. And here we have is, you know, this we have Bitcoin, which is amazing. But then we have this even more, you know, rebellious uh, technology next to it that really seems to truly align with your ideals. So why is it that you don't, you know, support okay. I'll, both? I'll, I'll, I'll say a couple of things there then. So I think in a world in which Bitcoin has won, uh, the, the need for a Monero disappears, right? Because um, at that point, you just don't need it. Like we have a fixed supply of money. We have a money that is outside of any capacity to for any, whether it's the state organization or anything to control. And, and I, don't, I think people underestimate how much that actually transforms the world. Because in, in a world of fiat, the nation state can exist because it can keep feeding itself 
by creating money and through taxation, right? So through theft and so through overt theft and covert theft, right? In a, in a Bitcoin world, the state can't fucking do that anymore. It actually starves and it collapses. And what we get is we get a fragmentation and decentralization of society because we move from what I call the subject overlord relationship, which is what we have today with governments into a customer service provider relationship is I think the future of cities, for example, are going to be private enterprises where someone ha fucking sets up a city, runs a city, brings in investment, and you pay a membership to be a member of that fucking city. Kind of like a th think of a hotel or a resort, but on a larger scale. I think that's the future of how humanity functions versus some you know bullshit social fucking contract that you have with um, a government that treats you like a piece of shit. And if you say something about it, you get thrown in jail, right? So, so I think in, in a world in which Bitcoin wins, we don't need anything else. And, and you know, you've also got the, the fact that Gresham's law at that point, like states that the, the, the stronger money, the money with the most economic mass, the, mon the, the money that everybody is holding, that is everyone's transacting, that we price all other goods and services in, it abolishes the need for any other fucking money. That just creates, um, it creates, what do you call it? Like friction and inefficiency in the way. There's no point, like there's absolutely no reason in, in an advanced society for us to be swapping money um, between different types, particularly when the money is open, uh, censorship resistant, and we are all on the same fucking standard and we know how much there is um, and we know that that can't be changed and we know that no one can come and play ruler in that world. We have the perfect money at that point. So, so that's sort of the first point I'll, um, I'll say is like in a world in which Bitcoin wins, we just don't need anything else. Like you know, th there will be privacy products that get built on Bitcoin that will guarantee you a complete fucking anonymity if you want to buy illegal shit or you want to do whatever the fuck you want to do that you might have had a use case from Nero. Um, you'll do that on a second or third layer, abstracted. But the beauty is that you'll be able to do that because anybody can create that service off the top of Bitcoin because they don't have to ask permission to do that, right? They don't have to go and beg Mr. Central Banker or Mr. Fucking Regulator can I build this service to help people buy a fucking crack? I don't know, wh whatever the case might be, right? On Bitcoin, you just fucking anchor into it, build a second layer solution, and you can provide the service to give people anonymity and privacy or whatever they want to do if they don't want to um, show their transactions on networks. So, so in that world, we don't need Monero. Um, along the way, uh, the question of... Um, you mentioned, you know, the only thing that's stopping Monero now is um, is people actually using it and, you know, kind of tied to what I said earlier about like economic value coming onto it. Like that's, that, that is required for, for a crypto network to thrive. It needs economic mass to pour on, right? Mm -hmm. Now, th this is where the market test, we can, we can apply the market test to Bitcoin and Monero, which is, Bitcoin is sucking the fucking oxygen out of not only, you know, fiat and not only gold and not only every other fucking asset, it's sucking the oxygen out of all the other cryptos because it is fundamentally superior. It has shown us in the marketplace that people value this idea of a fixed supply money. They value something like this that is easily verifiable, that is like, you know, it's got the, the, simple validation and, and the, the architecture or the value proposition that Bitcoin represents doesn't have to go out and um, say, look, come here and, you know, buy this. It's, it's naturally organically occurring that way. And, and this is the most free market, you know, anarcho-capitalist fucking manifestation of a money that we've ever seen. It's like Bitcoin doesn't, doesn't have a marketing department, you know, telling people to buy it like fucking Ethereum or Cardano or all these other shit coins have, right? You know, I'll, I'll give it to Monero as well. Monero's closer in the camp to Bitcoin in that sense. But once again, like Bitcoin is the prime leader for this. Like we don't need to even beg anybody anymore at this point. It's like, you know, I actually enjoy telling people not to fucking buy Bitcoin anymore because I want them to stay poor and they can go get fucked. You know, if they, if they want to be a supporter of the fiat system, I'm happy for them to hold on to their fiat and basically lose all of their wealth. Whilst all of us Bitcoiners, we are going to be the ones who run the fucking world um, tomorrow. And we're going to, we're not going to run it because we can fuck the rules up and make the rules benefit us. We're going to run it because we've built up a capital base 
and can make economic decisions. And the Muppets who were in the fiat world, who didn't want to let go of the fiat world, they can clean my fucking toilets, basically. Like, you know, if they want to be ignorant, that there's a price to being ignorant at this point with Bitcoin. And, and that's like, what I love about it is like, all the assumptions, all of the crap just breaks against the economic reality that Bitcoin is, which is a fucking black hole that's sucking up all of the oxygen or all the value out of everything else. Um, and, and that's just really, really, really hard to compete with. And then lastly, I'll mention, you know, you, you said something about the ASIC resistance on, on Monero. I actually think that's a detriment to Monero. I think that starts to, um, I think big, a lot of Bitcoin censorship resistance comes from the fact that it is not ASIC resistant. Um, and what we're going to see is as like th th this whole game and censorship resistance again is about tying the forward momentum of a digital network to something that's unforgeable in the real world. And proof of work does that by transforming energy into uh, an immutable network and an incorruptible uh, unit of account, right? The fact that Bitcoin, um, you know, is not ASIC resistant means that all of the energy, like stranded energy, renewable energy, all the fucking shit is going to converge on wanting to mine it. Um, and as that happens, yeah, we've probably gone through a bit of a centralization phase uh, with Bitcoin mining here and there as it's emerged. But on a long enough timescale, man, wherever there is energy in the world, it is going to mine Bitcoin everywhere. I don't care what anybody says. There is stranded assets all around the world. There is excess energy all around the world. There's fucking PowerPoints all around the world. There's renewable energy poorly distributed all around the world. Everywhere we're going to look, there is going to be Bitcoin miners. Simple as that. Um, and that is going to decentralize it far further. And these the, the application-specific integrated circuit, the ASIC, that performs that function and only that function ensures that Bitcoin remains economically censorship resistant because that's the most important thing like um so, so i think along the way you know you know monero monero might just act as the little brother who takes a bunch of fire for bitcoin um in the short term so that we can actually win the bigger war which is to bring down the state because we bring down the state when they lose the monopoly on money until then we are ducking and dodging we're second rate citizens basically um and, and that's why i just I just think this this battle we need to we need to you know unite around Bitcoin because it is the best fucking shot for humanity. With, without Bitcoin, we're all fucked. Like we we are genuinely fucked. We'll we'll be we'll be under a a complete fucking central bank digital currency standard. You know that our money will expire when they want it to. You know they'll tell us what we can buy, when we can buy, how we can buy it. They'll you know they'll fucking take what they want. Like we are literally serfs in a world without Bitcoin. Um, and I just think that we, we, we have to win this. We have to win the bigger war here. You know, like when, when you listen to a, a Peter Schiff and you're like, wait a minute, this guy is a libertarian. He's a gold bug. Why isn't he a Bitcoiner? I mean, that's just the same thing I hear when I hear you talk. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense with me. I think there's a lot of hypocrisy in what you're saying. Uh, you know, I could go through, you know, try to go through a lot of, I mean, yeah, like if, if Bitcoin wins, you're going to need Monero more than ever. Not, you're not going to need, you're not going to no longer need Monero. Then you're going to really need Monero. I mean, Why the, that? The, well, cause it's a completely transparent ledger. Uh, and that's, I, I think you'd probably agree that that's never going to change, right? You've said it yourself. It's all going to be second layer stuff. That's going to, so yeah. you talked about privacy being solved on the second layer. It's not going to be solved on the protocol layer. Uh, Bitcoin's never going to be truly fungible and it's never going to be truly private. Um, I, th I think we could probably both agree on that. Right. So, you well, know, if anything, the, 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 I think, the, why, the, why, I, why is that a problem though? I don't understand why that's a problem in a world in which Bitcoin wins. Why is it a problem that it's not fungible at the core protocol level? Well, no, it'll, it'll st like the market will force it to be fungible again. Like, why is it not fungible in a world in which Bitcoin wins? Like what, what, which, which. It's not fungible because the tech not, well, the, di the current direction of, of Bitcoin is, you know, we're seeing number go up, right? And that's, you know, it's, it's about Bitcoin is secure. It's digital gold. Come bring, put your money here. 
And what it's sacrificed is privacy. It's basically become KYC AML coin. Uh, you know, even talking about the miners, I mean, the Bitcoin mining network, uh, yeah, it's using up a lot of energy, which is great. Proof of work is great. It's showing the, the robustness of the network. Um, but, you know, it is it is currently I, I know you're saying long term, maybe it will become more decentralized. But the current state of the mining network is quite centralized, right? There's only it's only a few companies that are actually mining. Uh, ASIC miners are only made by, you know, one or two companies. And we're already seeing companies mining pools uh, that are essentially opting in to uh, only mining what they're calling, you know, clean Bitcoin, only mining, uh, you know, only processing transactions uh, for compliant Bitcoins. I mean, when you run that themselves. model out, when you run that model out further, there's a great article on it. We could send it. I mean, essentially, there's there's going to be no reason why all miners are going to opt to do that because that's it's it's about number go up at this point it's about maintaining even the cleanliness of the network right so you know michael saylor wouldn't be putting like you said it yourself right so it's it's great for opening the door right it's great that michael michael saylor went out and bought a billion dollars worth of, of bitcoin and put it on the corporate balance sheets and like you said he probably wouldn't do that with monero why because there's that there's that risk that you know Monero might be used for nefarious things, right? There's that risk. With Bitcoin, there's not. And we're continuing to move in that direction of that's what's being rewarded. That's what's being, re the market is rewarding Bitcoin for its ability to essentially, uh, you know, effectively at some point be censored, but essentially be cleansed, right? So Censored by who? Censored by who though? Censored by whoever want you know by the governments that want to step in and, and censor it we're, we're seeing it with, point, with mining at pool. what point no, no no i mean no, we're not seeing it with mining pools at all you know that they've attempted um but it's done nothing like the, the block the, done... no they're they're doing it they're actively doing it there's a mine there's that large with the the north american uh marathon mining pool i'm sure have you seen that have you followed that at all J jimmy song wrote a perfect article about this and so did nick carter about like the capacity to mine empty blocks. Uh, me and Giacomo Zucco were on a call about this. It's like they will bankrupt themselves in their pursuit to try and dictate what can and cannot be mined on the network because it's fucking impossible to do. It is economically impossible to do. Um, they, they, they just don't have a fucking chance. Check out Jiraj uh, Bed Bednar. I'll, I'll send you the article. We'll post send, it. In send me the link. I'll I'll have a look. But yeah, it's, know, it's I, a very it's a very um, convincing argument uh, using game theory to show that essentially, you know, all miners are going to move in this direction. It's going to make more sense for that. They're they're businesses at the end of the day, right? It's not it's not you, uh, the anarchist in your in your basement with your miners plugged in. These are guys who. Uh, you know, have a lot of mining equipment, millions of dollars that were used to purchase it, and just no, and because at that point, at that turning, point, at that point, money. Visa become Visa and Swift become better than Bitcoin, um, and you lose like so, so. So that is basically they will bankrupt themselves in the process of doing that. So they kill the golden goose. Like miners are not fucking stupid. They know no, because it, it will still be it will still be non-state controlled money to a degree. So it's still going to have no, that. It's still going to have Absolutely that hard money component, but it's not going to have it's not going to have privacy, and 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 wallets will be able to be blacklisted. It's I mean wallets are already getting blacklisted. Some wallets can get blacklisted, but the but the the, the funny thing is is that those companies cut off customers and they go bankrupt in the fucking process. Miners, no fucking miner is going to try and pick and choose transactions. Um, in in their right economic mind, unless they're fucking forced to do so. But if they are forced to do so, they're going to be second rate miners because we have a lot much larger node infrastructure than we have a mining infrastructure, and we can censor the fucking miners. So so like they they can't win that battle. That is not a battle they can win because they they cut their own fucking legs off. Jimmy Song completely abolished this um this uh this argument like it, it it is a non-starter because it's economically infeasible as an attack vector to try and 
segregate transactions and decide which ones are going to be mine or which I mean that, that's like that's like saying exchanges aren't going to KYC AML exchanges why? will mine miners right. won't and, and they do why 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 won't miners do it what do you, what do you say? when when the, when there's a regulation that comes out and telling them that they have to do it they're going to do it well, or they're going to you can get you can get no electricity from be... anywhere you can get electricity from anywhere Oh, and so the miners, how are the miners connecting to the traditional banking network at that point? They're not? Well, m most miners don't, no. At the, at the moment, of course they do. They, they, sell, to, they, they, sell their, they, they trade and sell their Bitcoin for cash. That's how they keep paying there the electricity. A fraction, they're, there they're not a paying fraction Bitcoin. of, at this point in time, less than 20% of miners the, are selling their Bitcoin. The major Bitcoin miners are still connected to the current banking system. It's how they keep their electricity running. They have to pay electricity bills. No, no, you're you're assuming that there's one large scale miner. That that's not again how it works. They 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 draw against their Bitcoin um, to pay electricity if they need to. But most of them are not even selling their right, Bitcoin. So how are they going to start drawing to. against their Bitcoin when regulators are coming after them? That that's my point. Like they're not, you know, they're. It's. I'll send you the article. We don't have to. We don't have to. You know, debate this point. Yeah, I. I but think, the other. I the other point very, I want. I think it's a very low risk point because, again, in a world in which um, Bitcoin wins, these regulators disappear. The state disappears. All of that stuff disappears. None of it is relevant anymore. Well, yeah, it has to. It has to get to that point, right? So, um, you know, I mean, and this this is way down the road, right? So. Bitcoin taking over and the state disappearing, uh, you know, this isn't something that's going to happen overnight, right? It's going to happen in, in phases. And, you know, once again, I, I align with you and I'm excited about that vision. You know, I, I'm that's that's why I'm a Monero guy, you know, so because I, I think at the end of the day, what we really need is the most robust version of crypto if we're going to make it through to the other side. Um, and I think... I think Bitcoin made some sacrifices and I think they made it for good reason, right? I mean, to, to have launched Monero, if Monero was the first, it would have been very hard to convince people to start coming on board and using it and trusting it. You know, the fact that it was right, you know, this was a completely abstract idea. We obviously understand it very well today. Um, and, you know, but when Bitcoin first launched, to tell, to tell somebody that, you know, it's this distributed uh, ledger network, very, very hard, very abstract, not easy to understand. Now, imagine if it was also obfuscated to the point where you couldn't even see the transactions. So, you know, Bitcoin needed to be that. And I get that. But it, I think ultimately it's a major flaw and it's allowing the it's allowing uh, wallets to be blacklisted. It's uh, basically made it impossible for it to be used privately uh, and it lacks fungibility. So even if you want to talk about it on a sound money level and saying, you know, it's digital gold, I just, I just don't even see how you get there. How could something be uh, digital gold if it's essentially not fungible at its protocol level? And then in turn, I just want to make one of the, you know, in, in response to what you were saying, I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here talking to you and yes, I'm saying, you know, why aren't you a Monero guy and talking about Monero? Um, but, you know, Monero is being used. So whether you use it or, or not doesn't matter. I'm just saying I would like to see somebody like you who has a large following, you're, you, who has great ideas, who really understands the philosophies behind all this stuff to be a Monero supporter. Do, do Ultimately, does Monero need you to be that? No, but would it help? Of course, it would help. It would help quicken the, the uh, you know, eventual destination. And, uh, you know, I think I think Monero is doing quite well. I mean, transaction volumes going up all the time and we're seeing it being adopted, uh, you know, for actual use cases. But it is frustrating to see people that, you know, claim to believe in these ideas. And I have to believe you do because you, you, you speak about it so passionately to then, you know, draw the line and say, you know, not you know i'm a bitcoin guy not a man guy like you might as well I've, might as well support I've picked i've picked I, i've picked the superior weapon like for me monero is like firing a bb gun at a train um and bitcoin is like having the big red button which is the nuclear bomb that fucking wipes out the enemy so um you know 
that there's there's just no comparison like Monero cannot succeed Monero cannot defeat the state um, you know it, it it cannot be a global transactional currency it's too heavy it's you know the verifiability and validation are more important than privacy um, privacy can be solved later verifiability and validation cannot be solved later so so because Bitcoin made those trade-offs in the beginning it means that is it is going to suck up all of the economic mass which is the that is the alpha omega in terms of what is important to beat the state we cannot beat it with monero we, we cannot beat it with a privacy first validation second um type of monetary protocol it has to be the, the only way we beat the state the strategy to beat the state is to do verifiability validation um and economic censorship resistant first um yeah, but Monero, I mean, Monero really, is doing all those. Like you say it like as though Monero is not doing those things. It is. Well, you, it's, it's doing it's, all Monero those is things. nowhere near as efficient. And Monero, Monero is 100 times heavier than uh, Bitcoin when it comes to um, transactions and node operation. It's heavier. It's, it's, it's yeah, that, that, that doesn't matter. Intense. I mean, that, that's it, it your does reasoning because it's heavier. Hmm. That matters a lot. If, that matters Monero, a lot because Monero Bitcoin can't scale than Bitcoin. Resistant can't scale it's they they're they're facing the, the same issue i mean well, not exactly can you do a second layer lightning network on monero yeah why not you, you can't it becomes increasingly difficult in fact in fact a network it, it's better architected for it because in monero it ha it has a tail emission right so back to that concept of if all transactions move to the second layer then there will be no incentive for miners to to uh, continue to mine on the first layer. Uh, with Bitcoin, you never, you, I mean, with Monero, you won't have that problem because there's the tail emission. So there'll always be a block reward. You're not, there's, you know, so there'll yeah, always that, be that not, incentive to mine with second allowing layers. transactions to move to the second layer. I don't think that's the problem with second layer. The, the, the problem with second layer is again, simple, easy verifiability, simple settlement, and a, a high degree of a settlement assurance. Um, you can't do yeah, that. Well, there's Monero. absolutely like, no reason like, why you multi sig can't. and hash time lock contracts are not easy on Monero. There's absolutely no reason why you can't build a second layer on top of Bitcoin. There's, I mean, there's, there's no technical reason as to why you couldn't build uh, a Lightning network on top of, on top of uh, Monero. There's no technical reason why not. Uh, it, you know, it's Bitcoin is ahead of Monero in that respect, but it's utterly behind in terms of adding privacy. And I think I think it's gone too far to the point where it won't be able to do it. Not on the on the core protocol level, right? Do, we, do you think? But again, we we don't need privacy later. In in a world in which Bitcoin wins, you don't need privacy on the base layer, because there is no institution that can do something to anybody with that stuff. Like, so, so, so the idea, like the, the reason we talk about privacy today is because an institution exists that wants to peer in and fuck with you. But as Bitcoin wins, they fall and it doesn't matter if the base layer is completely transparent. In fact, it's better like for us to live in a world where nobody can ever again um, have a monopoly on money, the base layer should be 100% transparent. You so you you don't want privacy on the protocol level. Absolutely not. Like we should have complete verifiability at the protocol level. I'm not saying verify Monero. You you can verify Monero as well. You, you know it uses it's math. It's much to harder, do. man. It's much harder. To yeah, do. but I mean that's that's kind of like what do you mean it's hard? Yeah, yes, it's harder, but you're getting a lot for it, right? So it's it does it you does it use uh, some complicated math to do it? Yeah. But you know, it's well, it's well that's, worth. That's it. not scalable. That's not scalable from a node infrastructure standpoint. Like, if it's, I want to run a node, if scalable. I want to be my own bank, it is extremely hard to do that on Monero. It's. I mean, it, it, Monero exists today. It's. It's currently scaling. It's currently growing. In, in how use. many non-mining nodes are in on the Monero network? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. I, I, I would venture to say it's an absolute fraction of the um the non-mining nodes on bitcoin and that is a critical part of achieving consensus it is yeah i mean that's just that's just you know keeping distri uh, de decentralization going that's just great you know that's just gr bitcoin is older than monero right it's grown more yeah but there's there's nothing it's, a, it's, it's not nothing a growth thing it's actually a cheapness thing it's a cheapness thing it's a cheap thing 
What do you mean? Cheap? Oh, for running a node, you mean? Cheap yeah, yeah, exactly. I can yeah. run a node for 50 or 100 bucks with Bitcoin. Um, for me to run a node with Monero, it's going to cost me way fucking more to do the same thing. You could you could run a node with Bic with Monero. I mean, you can, you can. Is it is it like uh, is not it for a fifty or hundred bucks? Yeah, it is. But I think you know that's kind of um, once again, it's like it's like arguing if if Monero can't scale, then Bitcoin can't scale. It's it's like there's there's really no difference there at that at that point. Um, I think there's a significant enough difference. But yeah, c coming back to what I was saying earlier about like. Do I believe that the base layer needs privacy? No, I don't. I think it needs pseudonymity, and that is that is absolutely strong enough. Like, okay, I mean that that that's interesting. Let's talk about that for a second. So, um, would would you want you know theoretically? I mean, would you want a world where we're running on a currency where it's all uh, private? At, at the core or would you want one? I know you're saying it has to be transparent, but that's what you'd want. You'd want it to be transparent. I think the base layer should be transparent. Yeah, because I think then people and you're not have the worried option. about that kind of leading to being, you know, the ultimate pan optagon of being able to see everybody's transaction, you know, no, kind of the no. opposite of this libertarian dream and not anarchist not dream. Because who, who's going to be the panopticon? How do they fund themselves? Anybody? Well, I mean, we're already seeing it, right? We're already seeing uh, t millions and millions of dollars being poured into the ability to analyze. Where, where, does, where does that money come from? It's coming from governments. There's chain analysis companies, right? Mm -hmm. No, I get what you're Sorry. saying. So, like, but you you have to get there, right? So, to get uh, along the way, the the Bitcoin blockchain is going to be heavily analyzed. It already is big. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to get worse and more money is going to get poured into doing just that. Yeah, let them do that. And then when as as Bitcoin gets stronger, they become obsolete. Simple as that. Like, you know, it's, I mean, for example, Taproot completely fucks them over because Taproot then obfuscates the difference between multi-sig transactions and uh, general transactions and all that sort of stuff. Like, good luck trying to fucking figure that shit out. Like, these idiots are going to build all these businesses. The government's going to pour a bunch of money into trying to support those businesses those businesses aren't going to be able to give any meaningful data back. So these idiots end up bankrupting themselves in the process. So it's just another example of these idiots bankrupting themselves, trying to fuck with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is just going to continue charging ahead. Like nothing they do is going to stop it. And as it continues to increase in economic mass and economic density, they, they're stuck. They, they have fucking lost this war. This is why I love it so much because they've already lost like we, this, there is no world in my mind that Bitcoin loses at this point. The, 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 the momentum is so strong now that these idiots don't have a choice but to put some of their um, economic mass behind Bitcoin. And they at the fringes can try and do things with, you know, exchanges with this and that. But the network itself, they can't change it. They can't fuck with it. Um, any attempt that they do you know, they, it will become economically uh, obsolete on the network itself. Um, you know, like, for example, if a bunch of miners try and start pumping empty blocks through um, and foregoing the entire component that is the, um, the transaction fee component of what they're earning, they are putting themselves at a straight up economic advantage to every other fucking miner on the network, which is madness. Like, they're, they're going to have to be funded by someone to do that. And that is a continual black hole of funding that no one's going to be able to maintain. So it's like, whichever way we dice it, these clowns have lost. Um, and, and what the focus should be right now is teaching people to run their own Bitcoin node, um, to put all of their fucking wealth out of the fiat system and onto Bitcoin, and to start thinking about how to understand, you know, whether it's CoinJoin or whether it's... Um, whether it's a uh, lightning network, whether it's all of that stuff, because those solutions do exist on Bitcoin. And that's how we win this battle. Sorry, oh, sorry, this war, this much larger war. Um, because in that future, then we have a completely transparent base money that nobody can pull any shenanigans with. Um, we then have different products and services that are built off the top of it. Like the future of finance that I see is one in which we don't have a couple of large you know, banks. We have hundreds of thousands of apps that function as 
you know, UI versions of a bank, they're service providers that sit on top of Bitcoin, which haven't had to ask for permission. They can derive a service, they can build a product and, you know, they might make, you know, messaging money really easy or they might be able to do all that stuff. But, you know, one might offer more privacy, one might offer, you know, speed, one might offer this and that, whatever the case might be, you know, we'll have a flourishing of financial products and services that emerge off of Bitcoin because they'll be able to anchor to this thing without having to go and ask a government institution or a body for permission to let me be a financial service provider. And that starts to bring more economic mass onto the network and people can choose what products and services they want. It's, it's the, it's the ANCAP dream. It, it is the cap, like it is raw capitalism, um, you know, with a capital C for choice and for capitalism, like, and, and that, that wins out like the, it, it's, the reason we keep like freedom loving people keep losing is because we keep losing the economic game. Like, and Bitcoin for the first time in history flips that on its head and we win the economic game. And by doing so, um, we win the game of freedom. Like, and I, I just think it's a, it's a beautiful sort of poetic um, uh, story. Like, I just, and, and yeah. I think, of course, there's challenges. There's going to be challenges along the way, but fucking hell, if we, if we like, I, I would offer the same counter argument to you. You're like, you know, why don't I sort of support Bitcoin? It's sorry, Monero. It's like, I would point the same thing to you. It's like, dude, we've got, we've got the winning ticket here. Um, we're not far off. Like, you know, Bitcoin only needs to grow another 10 X and it will completely decimate the financial system. Um, we're not that fucking far off. You know, if we just teach people to run their own node, um, you know, I mean, mining is becoming more ubiquitous. I know so many fucking Bitcoiners now. They've gone and bought a bunch of miners. They've fucking ran them in their garage and all this sort of shit. Like, that's the kind of shit we should be doing. Let's all mine. Let's all um, run our own node, move our fucking um, Bitcoin off exchanges. You, you sound um, like a Monero guy, man. You sound like a Monero guy. You, you, you could actually solo mine on Monero, which is kind of nice. Um you can solo mine on Bitcoin. It just takes a bit longer, but <laughs> you're not going to get anything. Um, I'm I'm surprised. I'm surprised that you. So, have you always been okay with that? With the fact that Bitcoin is transparent at the core protocol level, or was there a time where you thought maybe like it needed to adopt? I mean, you've only been in since 2016, but like mm. confidential transactions. Like, what was your take on that do you think yeah i i at the beginning i was like oh you know maybe this is needed and this and that but like as as i sort of understood the longer game better i was like yeah it's 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 a it would be a nice to have but it's not worth the trade-offs like we don't want to add complexity to the base layer like it has to be as simple as fucking possible it's like a constitution and the strength of a constitution comes with its simplicity like we don't need to add more trinkets and more bits and pieces to it. Um, like it has to be as transparent as possible. And that transparency actually aids in a future of a world in which um, everybody is um, like the money is accountable where nobody can actually try and pull a shifty one. Like, I think that is extraordinarily fucking important. Even though it means it can never be fungible. Well, it will be fungible at that point in time. There is no difference, um, but, you know, like the only reason the fungibility argument stands today is because a government institution might try and blacklist your wallet. But in the future, that doesn't exist. There is no grand fucking party or grand institution that is pressuring somebody to not um, accept a piece of money. How uh, about, about a powerful corporation or, you know, those won't exist anymore either? They, they can't exist. Powerful corporations, so, so these tech, technocratic leviathans, as I call them, have only been able to emerge because there is a monopoly on money. When you defeat the monopoly on money, large-scale corporates like your Amazons and Apples and everything, they cannot fucking scale. Like, the, yeah, but this, this, is, this is so like far down the road. I, I mean, don't think it not. is. I think we're probably a decade or two out. I don't think it's that far I, down I, the road. I think, I think you're, you know, that, that's a pretty risky endeavor to say we don't need um, privacy on the core protocol level because you're going to win the war and there won't be any threats that you're going to have to worry about that are going to observe the chain. I mean, that's, 
you know, humans are still going to be humans. You're going to have, you know, people are, there's going to be some that are more powerful than others, right? We agree that it's not going to be a pe perfectly egal mm -hmm. egalitarian mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. uh, people are going to take advantage of the fact that you can, uh, you know, basically spy on uh, at will uh, all luck transactions and people, with more, people with more resources will benefit more than others in terms of being able to take advantage of that. Good luck Whether it's a to state it to or a large corporation or just some powerful person. Good luck trying to tie um, an address to somebody on the Bitcoin network when there is no um, on-ramp, off-ramp mechanism at that point. Yeah, well, I mean, but as we're going, everybody is on ramping, right? So that everybody's going to already be, you know, tracked and traced. I mean, that the trail is already yeah, being created. A, a small proportion of Bitcoin, yeah, um, is tied to it, but it doesn't matter. That shit gets so mixed up along the way. Like again, a you know, sending a batch transaction. So let's say you're a you're a merchant and you've received a bunch of money from some people um, via Bitcoin, and then, you know, you send a batch transaction to pay an invoice, uh, provider later, that stuff gets so fucking convoluted. Like all the, like one of the most brilliant things Satoshi did was, you know, Bitcoin's architecture is not, um, you know, individual transaction, it's UTXOs, like it's unspent transaction outputs, which all end up getting mixed and, um, confused along the way. Like the, the, here's the beauty Bitcoin becomes as Bitcoin becomes more progressively used by everyone the the job of any chain analysis company becomes not uh, linearly harder it becomes exponentially fucking harder so these guys uh they're, they're fighting a losing battle but they're fighting a losing battle that is that becomes exponentially harder for them to map it, it becomes physically impossible for them to do this shit. i mean all, all the trend the trend right now is towards a chain that's becoming more and more analyzed that's I mean, that's the can, current that's the current but it becomes impotent and it's, it's literally tied into the engine of number go up so it's as 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 number goes up the analysts on the ch on the chain is going up as well it's part of what what's helping it go up it is but it becomes impotent it becomes impotent at at some theoretical future date potentially and i'm not really i'm not really seeing that i'm not I'm, you know I'm, I'm not seeing how that how that happens. I don't really see how that happens. What do you, what do you see as, and, and just cause I, I, you know, we'll wrap this up, but just, mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to kind of hear, you know, so how do you see this playing out? So in a, in a purely Bitcoin world or Monero world, whatever we want to call it, what is that world going to look like? If you want to describe it a little bit more, cause I, I, I do like when you talk about that, how do you see that uh, you know, what is the role of the, I know you've, you've talked obviously this like sovereign individual stuff, right? So I guess mm -hmm. the, the state is going to shrink, um, yep. you know, individuals are going to become more powerful. Is there anything else you want to say on that and how you see things playing yeah. out? I, I think the two big things is that we live in a world in which um, like I, I, I like to think of it as meritocratic feudalism. So I think the, the human beings will always uh society will always strata in terms of human beings there will always be you know uh different layers of um you know classes i, I don't think I, I think that's fundamentally inescapable um you know the idea that some people work harder and become a natural elite i think is actually perfectly normal you know you know we, we have pareto laws all throughout nature and pareto laws will exist uh, amongst humans as well like you know 20 percent of the basketball players you know, earn 80% of the money because they're the fucking best. Um, it's the same in sports, the same in arts, it's the same in business, it's the same in everything. What we won't have is what we've got. I, I believe what we have is unnatural inequality in the world today, which is we don't have an 80-20, we have a 99.9 .9 to a 0 0.1. And that is a function of um, institutions coalescing around a monopoly on money. When you break the monopoly on money, things start to get fragmented. So, um, I think we move towards a world in which we don't have nation states, we don't have 200 countries, we have a million cities. Um, cities become private. Um, everything sort of starts to run on a more private standard. Now it won't happen all at the same time. The, you know, decentralization is an emergent thing, right? Is you know some cities will be operated by smart operators um, who, let's say, had a lot of Bitcoin or who have been very successful in business before, and they buy up a bunch of private fucking land. And they build something um, and they charge a membership fee and you know intelligent people productive people all that sort of stuff go there 
and they start to build industry and they start to become economically powerful. Um, and as they become more and more economically powerful, they set an example for other people to want to do the same. So, so we end up in a world in which the free market is the forcing function towards progress, not some fake government who tries, tries to, direct to direct progress for humanity via fiat or via decree. So we start to get the emergence of natural hierarchies of competence. We start to get the emergence of natural, more functional societies, which have a limit to their size. Like the thing about uh, running a fiat state is there's no limit to its size, basically, because you can you can um, deny reality through robbing your constituents via inflation or taxation. Um, and you can actually grow much larger than what is organic in terms of how society can function. So. I, I believe that it's impossible to get more than 100,000 people to agree on a particular way of living. Um, and what that means is we have a natural cap towards, you know, the size of what cities or societies might be. Now, that does not preclude any cities to sort of form leagues and say, hey, you know, we all sort of agree we have similar values and shit like that. But, you know, we're doing our thing. You do your thing, whatever. And we trade and we interact and we do all this sort of stuff. But in that kind of a world, um, you know, you you have options, you have choice. Like we, we start, and this sort of ties into the third point, which is what I mentioned earlier. The the overlord subject relationship starts to disappear and the customer service provider relationship starts to emerge. And when you have choice, choice is the ultimate mechanism for uh, creating accountability in a counterparty. Um, without, without the capacity to choose, um, the counterparty does not need to have any form of accountability. And that's what that's the source of all government power is that they don't have to be accountable. Like if, I, if I'm a government, I don't like what you say, I fucking just shoot you and it doesn't matter. Like I, I, I'm not accountable for any of my actions. I can make like, I, I call it the, the game that governments get to play is heads I win, tails you lose. Like there's no decision that a government makes where it has to pay the price for its decision making. Um, whereas in a Bitcoin world, because nobody can print money, you know, bad decisions are penalized, good decisions um, compound. Um, and because of the, pen the, the fast penalization of bad decisions, um, society corrects very quickly um, and it becomes more anti-fragile and more robust uh, in that type of an environment. Because when you fuck up, um, you think twice about it. Um, the, the other interesting thing that Bitcoin also offers, because you've got this fixed supply money, what ends up happening is, the productive capacity of all of society reflects in the total purchasing power of Bitcoin, which means holding Bitcoin, holding savings almost acts as an ETF on all of society. Now that has an interesting effect on people is that consumerism goes down because you start to think about spending your fucking savings before you need to. You start to be more prudent and more temperate when it comes to spending or using resources. So we make better decisions around consumption. We make better decisions around productivity. We make better decisions around innovation. And, you know, the best of us are able to perpetuate. And those of us who don't want to do shit, who just want to save some money um, or potentially back someone or invest in someone, you know, we saving will have its own benefit. Investment has its own benefit. You'll have to beat the, the, the collective rate, uh, the collective purchasing power uh, increase that Bitcoin will naturally have just by saving fucking money. So, so it changes all of these basic, um, these base incentives about how people um, interact. It also lowers the, um, another I think big one is it lowers the cost of uh, defense and it increases the cost of attack. Like fundamentally, you know, traditionally speaking, it's like violence was a way to confiscate somebody else's wealth. You know, but when your wealth is a function of something you've memorized, becomes much fucking harder to do that. So you as um, a logical, partially rational person um, will prefer to trade than steal uh, in order to develop wealth. Now, you might go and try and steal the first time, the second time until you get fucking shot in the face, um, in which case, you know, you either don't do it again because you're dead um, or because you got beaten up, you know? So, so it's like, it changes so much about the world. Like, you know, I think fragments, it makes theft a hell of a lot harder. Um, you know, we're all on the same standard, so nobody can play any fucking shenanigans. Um, Large-scale companies, institutions, governments, and everything start to break down and start to fragment, 
because there is a benefit in being small and nimble as opposed to a benefit in being a behemoth when you can't fund yourself by stealing from everyone. All that sort of stuff changes. And I think it'll usher in, you know, fundamentally, like I, I think Bitcoin is our path through the great filter. I think in the absence of Bitcoin, we either nuke ourselves or we become a fucking subservient um, species to some sort of AI that gets unleashed because a fucking crazy government thinks that, um, you know, they can control every aspect of people's decision making through a computer. So, yeah, that's. I think it's a bright future, a computer that's going to read that transparent blockchain that we're all transacting on. All right, man, this, this is a good this is a great conversation. I, I you know, I, we just fundamentally disagree there. You know, I, I think the future is going to be running on an on an uh, same technology, uh, a lot of the same thoughts you have. But uh, fundamentally, I, I want that that ledger to be obfuscated. Uh, and I think that's going to protect our liberty. But uh, thank you, man. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Yeah. And uh, I will continue to follow you and listen to your shows. You do good stuff, man. Thank you, man. Likewise, likewise. Yeah. And then look, I mean, I, I, I love that my final thoughts here would be, I love that we're on sort of, you know, our, our, our passion and vision is aligned, I guess. Um, our strategy is different. Um, and it'll be interesting to see in the coming decade, you know, which strategy performs the best. Um, I mean, th th this is the beauty of, you know, free individuals uh, being able to, you know, adopt a different strategy. Like, and, and that I think is fundamentally important. Like, I, I think I'm right. You think you're right. And let's see what the market fucking says um, over the next decade. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.